Can you go from 1, 2 to 1025 in just two months? Well, let's find out. I'm here in Dallas, living here now actually, and I'm gonna be playing 1, 2 Hold'em today uh, for the first time on this channel with the goal of making $5,000 playing 1, 2. I don't know how long it'll take. I'm not gonna be able to do it in one day, not gonna be able to do it tomorrow, but I think I can do it in two weeks. I, I don't know, the math is kind of ambitious, but I think it can be done. Now, once that's accomplished, I can move up to 2.5, and the goal there is to make another 20,000. So that's gonna be tough also. But again, I think it's possible if I play well and <laughs> have some run good, I think I can do it. So if those two things are accomplished, I can move up to 10.25, which is the biggest game that runs here in Dallas. They like don't really have 5.10 hardly ever. So it's a pretty big jump from 2.5 to 10.25. And I've never played 1025, but I definitely want to. So if we can make this $25,000 starting at 1-2, then two months from now, that's the time limit for the challenge, gotta be able to finish within two months, uh, I'll shot take the 1025 game, and hey, who knows? Could be great, could be bad, uh, but hopefully we'll get to that point. So here in Dallas, let's jump into 1-2. This is gonna be tough, man, but yeah, I think I can do it. Let's go. Well, this game turned out to be a lot more action than I was expecting. We sit down in the five seat right in the middle of it all and right away, everybody's talking about the player in the eight seat. Apparently he is crazy action and he is up heaps in this one, two game. And we waste no time getting involved with him. He makes a straddle under the gun to $10. So at this card room, you can actually straddle up to five times the amount of the blind. So he's doing the max of that. We're playing one, two, 10 this hand and I've got a premium on the button. It's ace queen. There's a limp in front of us. I raise it up to 40 the straddler calls and the limper call so we're going three ways to a flop and it's a good one right away ace eight seven two diamonds action checks to me i bet about half pot 65 dollars straddler makes the call limper wants to put in even more money he goes all in 323 dollars wow to be honest this guy does not seem like a bluffer but my hand's too strong to fold so we're gonna put it in right here on the first hand i call straddler thinks about it for a while but decides to fold the guy asks if we can go twice i'm always happy to go twice so that's what we do and it turns out he has the same hand as me ace queen now i've got a backdoor flush draw to diamonds and he's got it to hearts so we'll probably chop but maybe somebody's gonna get a little bit extra and on the first board the five of diamonds comes out i might be able to get him right here nope bricks out second one bricks out too so we split this one up that's a chop buddy what it what was that? That was weird. Next hand, not a premium. It's seven six offsuit. There's a five dollar straddle. Somebody limps, and I decide to limp too. I don't limp very often at all, but in this case, I'm expecting a raise from Mr. Action, and he doesn't let us down. He makes it pretty big. He goes forty five dollars from the button. I don't really want to put that much in out of position, but when everybody else folds, I want to play heads up against this guy. I think I can outplay him. He could have a hand even worse than mine, believe it or not. And now he's saying he didn't look at his cards. Now, usually when people say that, I don't believe them, but I believe this guy. I make the call and we get a pretty good flop. It's eight, five deuce rainbows. We're open-ended on a really dry board. I checked to him. He sizes up now $75. Well, I flopped well, but I don't want to play this passively because if I miss the turn and he bets big again, he can bet me out of the pot. I'm going to try to get aggressive. I make it 175, pretty small raise, but I'm sizing up for the turn. He makes the call and we don't get there on the turn. It's another five. I'm not really even sure what I'm going to represent if I go all in, but I don't think he has a strong hand. So let's try to get him off of whatever that is. I go all in. It's about $290 total. He thinks for a while, but eventually says fuck it and calls. <sighs> That's not good. We go twice again. First board is a 10. That's no help. But the second board's a four. So that helps a lot and we chop it up against ace queen over there man i guess i should not bluff him yeah that's i'm not gonna bluff him anymore that's a chop buddy all right the next orbit we're back in the low jack and we look down at ace nine offsuit there's a limp i make it 15 dollars, and we get three players to call one of which is of course mr action on the button flop comes down pretty good for us nine five five rainbow as long as nobody's got a five we are golden i bet 25 dollars. the player next to me makes the call mr action's gonna put in a little min raise he makes it 50 i kind of want to re-raise him but i'm also a little bit worried about the guy to my left i make the call 
and the other player makes the call too. So we're down to three, going into the turn, king of spades. Action checks all the way through. Final card is a 10. Don't really love this run out. I'm gonna put out a little blocker bet because I don't want action man to make a huge bet over there. I'm gonna set my own price. I make it $30, got on my left fold, which I'm pretty happy about, and button makes the call. And guess what? We've got the same hand again. Ah, uh, you, yep, that's a chop. So a lot of chops here to start. I still haven't won a hand outright, but that's all about to change when I pick up pocket tens in early position. I raise it up to 10 bucks. Action man isn't gonna play for only 10 bucks. We know that. He goes 40. There's a cold call in there somewhere. And when action's back on me, usually with pocket tens in this kind of configuration, you wanna just call. But against this guy, I hope to get all the money in with pocket tens. It's really unlikely that he has a better hand than me. A lot of times I'll have him absolutely dominated. I make it 160 to go. And our man says that's not enough either. He goes all in. Other guy thinks for a good while. And I'm pretty worried about this because he could have like pocket jacks or something that he's playing kind of passively but thankfully he makes the fold and it's back on me i'm happy to get it in i make the call we go twice again first board seven seven four ace deuce second board king eight six nine five well gonna be pretty tough to win both of those boards and in my case it's gonna be tough to win even one because he's got pocket queens and he scoops whoops So we get felted pretty good there. Definitely not the start I wanted to this challenge, but things can turn around quick in this game, especially when the next hand is a double board bomb pot. Let's go. So the way it works here is everybody puts in $5 and we see two flops and we're playing hold'em, not PLO. So we're dealt not a super great starting hand. It's 10-8 offsuit. First board, ace, nine, eight. So we get bottom pair, not a whole lot going on. Second board though, 973 rainbow. Open ender on a dry, unsuited board. That's pretty good. Still, I don't want to pile money in against eight other players here. When action checks to me, I check also. And when action checks to Mr. Action, he does not check also. He's going to put out a bet. And it's a pretty big one considering there's, what, $45 in the pot? He overbets it. He makes it $65. And actually three of us make the call. So we're going to a couple of turns here jack of hearts on the first board that's on the top board not the bottom we needed that jack on the other board but we don't get it it's another seven so not very good turns at all for us i do now have two open-ended straight draws but it's really not as enticing as it was before i check and thankfully everybody checks this time so we're gonna get to see some rivers here first one comes out a 10 of hearts so flush gets there and it's a four liner to a straight i do have two pair there but that's pretty unlikely to be good bottom board well it's a jack that's what we were looking for before so we're very likely good on that board guy in front of me checks and it's on me now I I think it's really unlikely that we win the top, but it's very likely that we win the bottom. The only hand, realistically, that we're gonna get beat by is jack seven. If somebody has jack seven, we are screwed. Now, there's about $300 in the pot, and I have 430 total. Again, I don't think I can win both boards. I've had enough chopping. I'm gonna try to win this one outright. I go all in. Everybody thinks about it for a good while, but eventually every single person folds. The last player showed me 10-9, so we were chopping with him. I'm guessing probably one or the other players had me beat on the top board too. I don't know for sure, but hey, at least we finally win a pot. We're back on track. Come on, let's get it. Well, tens didn't work out, but how about pocket jacks under the gun? I raise a 10, you know who makes it 45. When action gets back around to me, look, I know I got burned before, but I'm still gonna four bet this hand. I go up to 175. Now, the last time when he had the queens, he went all in like maybe a few seconds after I made my four bet. This time he goes into the tank, really thinking about his options. I'm feeling pretty good about this development, to be honest with you. Eventually he makes the call. So we're gonna see a flop here, 350 in the middle and I've got about 500 behind. Flop comes out queen eight six rainbow. Okay, so we get one over to our jacks, but overall it's pretty good. I'm willing to get it all in with him right here. I think about checking to induce, but actually I think it's a good idea to bet really small and kind of induce him that way. So I bet $85, less than a quarter of the pot here. And sure enough, he goes all in. Well, 
My plan was to go with it, so I think about it for just a few seconds, and yeah, I'm going with it. I call. If he's got a queen, two pair, or a set, <sighs> that'd really suck, but I'll live with those results. So we agree to run it twice again. Seems to be a theme of the table. Everybody runs it twice. Kind of nice. First board, four, deuce. Second board, ace, ace. He's pretty hesitant to show his cards, makes a face like, ooh. And when he turns them over, he's got jack seven suited. So... <laughs> We got that in really, really, really good, and we're gonna scoop this one. Things are really turning around, and this is why I was so happy to go in with the 10s earlier. Like, this guy is genuinely crazy, and if he beats me, he beats me, but I'm willing to put the money in with strong hands, no matter what. Thanks. Right after we get dealt a beautiful 9-8 of diamonds. Our man makes it $15 and three of us call. All in all, a pretty cheap round of pre-flop betting here. And we see a nice flop. It's queen jack three with two diamonds. Really strong draw for us here, but action actually checks around. So the turn card brings a six of clubs. Definitely not what I was looking for. I'm not gonna start bluffing here. I check. Our man this time isn't gonna check twice. He bets $60, only I make the call. And we get there, seven of diamonds. Now I'm out of position here in the small blind. I could lead, but I think it's better to let him blast off with air. So I check it over to him, but unfortunately, he checks back pretty quickly. Ah, playing out of position is tough. In the next orbit, we get dealt another premium, ace king in the small blind. Our man makes it 45 off the bat. Action folds to me, and yeah, this is the kind of hand I want to put in against them. I make it 200 to go, and he ends up making the call. So we're not going to go all in pre-flop this time. We're going to play a little post-flop. He's got about $900 behind, and I do have him covered now. Flop, not great. Queen, queen, jack with two hearts. I don't really see much point in betting here. I check, and I'm kind of relieved to see him check back. Charon gives us some help. It's the king of hearts. So flush gets there. A lot of straights get there. I probably have the best hand now. I want him to bet, though, with air, because I think there's a good chance he just has nothing going on at all. I check, but unfortunately, he checks again. Now, I just hope another heart doesn't come. Instead, it's a 10, so we make a straight now. The only hand I can think of that beats us is pocket 10s, and there's a good chance we chop now with another ace high. I'm not going to check a third time. I'm going to bet small, though, and maybe induce a bluff. I bet $125, but he doesn't bluff at it. He makes the call instead. I show, and we're good we do get a slight downgrade in the next hand it's ace queen this time action folds to me in the cutoff i raise it up to 10 bucks small blind makes the call but you know who's in the big blind he's not gonna call for 10 he makes it 125 dollars that's a 12x raise by the way and <laughs> well he's got about 600 dollars behind i think my hand's good enough to get it in against him i go all in other guy folds and our man goes into the tank when he does that, I know I've got the best hand. Kind of rooting for a call, but I'm also happy to just take it down right here. And that's what happens. He ends up making the fold. He tells me he had pocket threes. So if he's telling the truth, then we got him off a lot of equity there. I'm showing him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Playing a lot of good cards today. It's ace king suited this time in the hijack. A player limps. I raise it up to $15. The button calls and you got our man in the small blind. I'm hoping he raises it up big again, but he raises small. He makes it $40. Now the limper cold calls and I can't really jam this time because he made it so small. It would just kind of be an over, well, it wouldn't be an overplay, but I think it'd be wasteful to just go all in and likely take it down. I think we can make it a more realistic sizing and then plays post flop. So I go 180. Now the button player who just called my 15 puts in the rest of his chips. He's got like 80 something dollars total. So there's going to be a side pot now. And now it's on our man in the small blind, hoping he just jams it in there but instead he makes the call and the original limper makes the call as well so we're going three ways to a flop with a short stack in the mix as well well hope there's an ace or a king out there and there isn't it's jack nine six rainbow now i'm in position here the two guys check to me i could just jam it in they both have about 500 dollars behind but i just i just don't think it's the play especially with the short stack in there if he's got 
any piece of that we're really only playing for like half the pot so i check it back hoping to improve on the turn and we don't it's a seven of diamonds really bad card because that kind of hits uh our man's range over there and sure enough he jams $500. The other guy thinks for a while and folds. And yeah, I'm not going to call it off with ace high here. I make the fold. The two of them go to a river. And sure enough, <laughs> the river comes the king of diamonds. And the short stack is actually going to quadruple up here with king queen suited. So we don't get to see what Mr. Action had. But yeah, I would have beaten everybody if I had seen a river. Oh, well. Okay, let's try to play not a great hand. Action folds to me on the button. Our man is in the big blind. I want to play hands against him. So I raise it up to 10. And I know I'm going to get three bet a lot here, but I'm okay with it. As long as he doesn't make it like 125 again. Instead, he makes it 40. And yeah, I'm going to make the call. It's not a great holding, but I'm in position against the guy I want to play against. Let's do it. Flop comes down, jack 10 deuce rainbow. We're not exactly all over that. He bets $60 and look, against anybody else, I would fold. But I actually think there's a decent chance we're still ahead here so i'm gonna float i make the call and the turn's a good one it's the king of hearts brings in a flush draw more importantly brings us top pair he bets 90 dollars this time i think about raising but it's probably an overplay i just make the call and the river is probably the worst one in the deck it's the queen of hearts flush comes in all kinds of straights come in i probably lose now even against him i'm not gonna call down so i'm happy to see him check and when he does that i check back right away but he has king jack wow i had a bad read on this hand nice hand to him how about another suited connector? It's 7 5 of spades. I'm in the $5 straddle. There's a limp. Our man makes it 60. You never know what he's going to raise to. I mean, sometimes it's like 15, sometimes it's 60. <laughs> And I haven't really been able to figure out what it means because he's done like big sizes with bad hands and good hands, but he's also done small sizes with both good hands and bad hands. So he's a balanced GTO player is what I'm trying to say. So like I said, 7-5 suited in the straddle. He makes it 60. Player on the button calls. Look, I know it's a huge bet, but I want to play pots against him and I've got a hand that can crack anything i make the call and the limper calls as well was a little worried that the limper was gonna back jam a lot of guys have been doing this thing where they limp in wait for him to raise and then put in a huge raise themselves with like pocket kings so i was worried about that but thankfully that doesn't happen we get to see a flop and it's eight six three two spades open-ended flush draw wow huge huge hand action checks over to our man he puts out a chunky 150 dollars bet the button folds and yeah i'm just gonna put it all in i think that's the move right i'm not gonna play this passively and let him bet me off of it later i'm just gonna take control of the pot see what he's got maybe he'll call me down with ace high again there's no hand that we're really behind what we don't want is for him to have a better flush draw that's the only hand that we're really behind so i go all in he's got about 700 dollars behind this 150 so it's a pretty big raise by me and he goes into the tank for a while and he says he has pocket nines which <laughs> i kind of don't even believe because i think he would be happy to go with that hand but he thinks and thinks and thinks and eventually he makes the fold and the dealer puts out a run out for for us to see what at least the first board would have been i assume we would have gone twice because that's what we've been doing but first board turn comes a four to give us the nuts and the river's a 10 so we definitely would have won that one so i kind of wish i just called and let him blast off further but i think this is a great play take down a big big pot at one two with just seven high on the flop okay how big no. Another good hand. It's ace jack suited in the hijack. I make it 10 bucks. A player calls and our man makes it $80 from the big blind. Well, he's got about $750 total. I think a jam here would be too much, but I'm definitely going to put in another raise, take control of the pot. I make it $260 to go. Gets back around to him and he puts it all in there. Don't love this spot. I mean, ace jack suited is good. It's not great i definitely wouldn't get this in for 750 dollars at a one two game against probably anybody else but against this guy i'm gonna have to make the call i call and we're gonna see two run outs let's see how it goes heart heart yeah me too <laughs> Hey, Strap. 
That's good. I guess that's straight, straight. Oh, look at that shot. Oh, that kind of straight. Oh, man. Yeah, right? Oh, so close. Ah, you, you, yep, that's a chop. Yeah, so we chopped that one up. I thought I was going to quarter him, but he actually had a bigger straight than the one on the board on that first board. Just needed another heart on the first one, man. Just needed another heart couldn't get it but that's all right things are still going well got jack 10 offsuit this time not the best hand i'll admit that but i want to play <laughs> i'm gonna make it 10 to go and our man's on the button he makes it 50 the player in the one seat cold calls don't love that i'd rather just go heads up and like calling 5x raises out of position with jack 10 off isn't a winning play by any quantifiable metric but i'm feeling good about it i make the call and the flop looks good for us it's 10 4 3 rainbow really dry board and we've got top pair action checks to our man and he bets huge 250 well over the size of the pot the other guy thinks for a while now if he puts money in the pot i'm just gonna fold because he's tighter than the guy on the button and if he's willing to go with it then it's pretty unlikely that i beat both of these guys but he ends up making the fold our guys got like like maybe $400 behind. And yeah, I think the move here, I mean, if I call the pot's huge and he's got what, 400 bucks behind going to the turn, don't want to see like an ace king or queen come out. Let's just get it in right here right now. I jam, he thinks for a decent bit, happy to fade the snap call, but he does make the call. Not totally sure where we're at, but I think I'm ahead. We run it twice like usual. It comes out six, seven on the first board. Definitely not what I wanted. Any five beats us there. Other one is a 10 and a 9. Feel really good about that one. But why would I? Because he's got queen 10 offsuit for a better hand. And he gets me pretty good in this one. And that's a charm. <coughs> Boy, things have taken a turn for the worst here. Lost a good amount of money on that last pot. And going into this hand, maybe I'm slightly tilted. I'll be honest. Now our man makes a $10 straddle, three players limp, and I've got a suited ace, ace seven of hearts. And I decide I'm gonna go for it. I raise the $60, our man on the straddle calls, and so do the three limpers. So we're gonna go five ways to a flop here. $300 in the middle. Keep in mind, this is still a one, two game. Please dealer, put some hearts out there, maybe some sevens, give me something, man. And it comes four, three deuce, one heart, two diamonds action checks to me and look i'm gonna stab put out a nice little bet here see what's going on i think there's actually still a couple ways i can win the pot i bet half of it i make it 150 dollars action man calls he's a hard man to uh, make fold and another player calls too now when another player calls i know i'm behind and i have a really i'm gonna have a really tough time winning this pot so the turn comes the king of clubs action checks to me i have like 450 behind and the pot is 750 i just don't think i can make both of them fold even on the king if i had a king i would for sure jam here even if i had like pocket sevens i would probably go all in here but that's not what i have so i pretty much just give up here i check back river is the jack checks to me again now now when this happens i do have a chance to get them to fold because if they were both drawing especially our action man they can fold the river now where they wouldn't have folded the turn so i do think about jamming here but my hand just wouldn't make any sense so if anybody's paying attention they would for sure call right so i just check back maybe there's a sliver of hope that i win with ace high but instead the player in seat one's gonna take this one down with five four of diamonds so he flopped huge i'm surprised he didn't just want to put the money in on the flop but either way he wins the pot nice hand well, I'm down a cool thousand dollars over the past two hands, and I look down at pocket eights up next. Through a series of raises, we get this one all in preflop against you know who. And we're gonna go see two boards here. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, pocket jacks are good. Well, I guess now I got to make $6,000 at one, two. Uh, yeah, this didn't go how I wanted to at all. I probably overplayed a couple of hands, but like not that much, not as much as like it might seem. 
I was definitely down to just gamble against that guy. And yeah, this time the gamble didn't go my way, but it's okay. Um, I decided to just leave. I should probably just stay and try to win it back, but I don't know. I've kind of had enough and it's getting late. Chipotle is going to close in an hour. So if I stay, I'm not going to hit that. It's very, very important. So we're just going to call it for today, uh, but I'll get back at it. I do think, I mean, that was a, an above average game. Uh, I might not get a game that good for a while, but I still am confident that I can do this challenge. I can make the one two in the next two weeks still, I think. It's just gonna take one or two really good sessions and it'll happen. Um, but yeah, thanks guys for watching. Uh, hopefully the next one goes better. I'm gonna film most of the sessions, maybe all of them, I don't know. I think I'll do some like YouTube shorts too. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll, get the 6k now in the next couple of weeks we'll see hopefully you know i play a little bit better i guess there were like a lot of situations though where like like if he had called when i had seven five suited and we just ran it like i would have won and i would have felted him like there were a couple times where like i was really close to felting him like we chopped a couple of all ends where like i would have just won and that might have just been it and i could have like won 1500 bucks instead of losing a thousand but you know shit happens uh it is what it is i will say too like i haven't played one two in a long time for like more than you know like 20 minutes just waiting for a different game the regs are like so like annoying because like i mean this guy's like a huge whale right and these guys are doing shit like oh the card's already out he can't straddle even though he's been putting out a ten dollar straddle every single time that he can or like making him show his hand first, even though they know that they're good just to like see it. Like it's just when he doesn't want to show it. Like there's like stuff like that where like you should just try to keep the whale happy and like, you know, not like make him want to leave. Uh, and there were like probably three dudes that were just like wanting him to leave. Uh, also there's a lot of strategy talk it seems like at one too. And I don't know if the strategies that they're talking about are very good. I mean, easy for me to say, I just dusted off a thousand dollars to the table, but yeah, I, there's, they say some kind of crazy stuff very confidently, uh, but I guess that's poker. Uh, looking forward to playing. Hopefully we can do this challenge still. Yeah, I think we can. I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you next time on the K-Dog Poker Vlog. Take care.